at each other and living with pride, trying to make a stand. In the mother of California with its mountains tall and grand. Seven brothers, bold and strong, living in the promised land. Working hard every day in the blazing sun on the open land. Dreaming visions at night of the life they plan. Seven brothers, bold and strong, living in the promised land. What was that about the wrong century? How bad? 280 bucks. If oh. the frame isn't bent. Hey, come on. A minor setback to the McFadden ranching empire. Yeah. Um, look, I coax craning and driving like that, so... Uh, I'll take care of the repairs. Fat. Right. Chance. Right. What are you going to do? Rob your piggy bank, big brother? No, wrong. Think I'll get a job. You've got a job. Working the ranch. Yeah, well, right now, that's not going to take care of the Jeep, is it? I mean, with uh, sick cows and uh, broken generators and now the bent axle, there's a lot left, is there? Brian, look, we've got other uh, options. It's all right. Adam, it's all right. It's all right. I heard Middletown Sawmills finishing the season. They're hiring on a few extra hands, so uh, we'll go up there tomorrow and check it out. Well, what do you know about cutting trees? That can be rougher than ranching. Well, let's just say that I need a challenge. So do you guys. See if you can handle the ranch here without me. See the third from the left? Yeah. She's unreal. Cheryl Fever? Is she new? Hey, McFadden, left. Hey, little brother. Don't want to hurt you now, little brother. It's calling Audible. Button hook. Ten steps. the third play you messed up. Sorry, Coach. Like girls, McFadden? Yes, sir. I guess so, sir. Wrong, McFadden. On this field, you like blocking and kicking and completed passes. You like causing pain to your opponent. You don't like girls on this field, McFadden. No, sir. But since you like girls so much, I've got a way for you to spend more time with them. Miss Williams has got a dance class after school. 
She's been trying to get some of you athletic males interested, but you're all too chicken. Uh, Coach, I... You're the first volunteer, McFadden. Coach, look, I promise... Tomorrow after school. Be there. that sawmill myself. I won't let anybody touch it but Shepard. Of course, he only comes around when he feels like it. You see, Shepard is a cowboy who really believes he's a cowboy. Hey, Shepard! A young fella here wants to learn. Well, send him to college. Aye, he says he can't afford it. He don't look like much. Set him up. Let's see how long he lasts. Now, he'll show you what to do. But don't you show him how to goof off like you do all the time. Come on up. It ain't dangerous unless you're stupid. How you doing, Brian McFadden? Well, Brian McFadden, I'm going to saw the lumber. You're going to pull it through here. You think you can handle that? Just keep your mouth shut and your eyes open, OK? Maybe you'll get through the day without sawing yourself in two. Get to it. <laughs> Pass some course you were supposed to flunk? Oh, much better than that. Were you in love or something? No, not quite that good. <laughs> Daniel. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm practicing for little brother. He's going to need some help in his new dance class. Daniel. Oh, didn't he tell you? Evan, you shouldn't deprive your family of this knowledge. Evan is in the girls' dance class. Really? Isn't Wonderful. that just the sweetest thing you've ever heard? <laughs> <laughs> Cheerleaders doing football practice. Coach sent it oh. to the dance class. Oh. <laughs> oh, he did, did he? Well, that's not so bad. Evan and Opie, you're tired. Mm. Catch the tango, dear brother. Daniel! Yeah, I'm down from Wyoming. I was looking for a roundup. So I hopped this freight with my horse. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, to you young fellas, that may not be much of a feat. But in them days, a train shack was one mean son of a fancy woman. Yeah. And, and it was about as easy to get the horse on board as me passing St. Pete at the pearly gate. Ben Shepard, the last of Butch Cassidy's wild bunch. I mean, we're almost to Arizona when the boxcar slides open and the biggest railroad cop you ever seen fills my tired eyes. And before I can say dead men tell no tales, I'm looking down the barrel of a 44. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Did it shoot caps or a stream of water? <laughs> I took out my 22 revolver, five shots, single action, and I shot the 44 out of his hands. <laughs> I did. Now, I end the story, except, of course, that I had to mount my horse, leap out of that boxcar, which happened to be going over a bridge that spanned a canyon about a thousand feet down. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you saying that you drew and shot a 44 out of someone's hand? You saying I can't shoot a 44 out of somebody's hand? Oh, I don't know. You kind of think you're pulling our leg? Yeah. Are you calling me a liar? I guess I am. You don't guess about a thing like this, boy. Either I could or I couldn't. Are you calling me? Hey, look, I ain't calling anybody, Shepard. Exactly. Where's that gun? You're pushing me into this, boy. 
Shepard, I ain't calling you. Say it. All right, that calendar down there. Just go ahead and punch out the days of the week. That'll be good enough, all right? You don't know how to leave well enough alone, do you? A fellow wants to have a good time, and you got to ruin it for him. Hey, ho come on, Shepard, hold on now. Just make you laugh. Make a man look like a damn fool. I didn't have you put any money on it. <laughs> now, boy, why don't you stand over there with Peterson's gun in your hand and let me show you how I really done it? <laughs> oh, Shepard, you son of a gun! <laughs> noisy, Guthrie. It's real noisy. No, really? Yeah, I just told you, didn't I? Oh, excuse me. Hey, listen, little brother, you've been getting a smart... Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hold it. Now, he was just showing a little interest in what you're doing. There's nothing to say. It's just a job, okay? Okay? Okay. We missed you last night, Brian. Are you wearing a bed check now? No, I didn't say I was out looking for you. Oh, never, never mind. Just don't mind me, all right? It's just when I've been working with a bunch of characters nose to nose. And I thought perhaps at home I could kick back and relax without a lot of hassle. Sorry I said anything. I'm sorry. No, I'm the one who's sorry. Hey, look. I don't want to bum on anybody's breakfast. I'm really not hungry anyway. Just me, all right? For some reason, I just didn't feel like listening to the same 